Chaplain Paul and trying to record a little worship service in my house. And here I am in my room with our fire and my dog's over here. She may walk into the picture. I don't know. Uh, we're trying to find new ways of doing things, but I hope this works. We're going to continue to try different things, uh, but I'm happy to be with you today. This is Palm Sunday. We're missing, celebrating things as we usually do, but let's remember what happened on this day as we begin. And uh, I'm going to just read you the story from Matthew, the account of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. And this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass and on a colt, the foal of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the ground, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds said, This is the prophet Jesus from Galilee. Thanks be to God. Here's a song based on that event called, appropriately enough, Hosanna. One, two, three. for this day, Palm Sunday, or sometimes called Passion Sunday, as we pray, Almighty and everlasting God, who of your tender love toward mankind has sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility, mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, these are um, certainly extraordinary times we're going through, as you all know. And though it is Palm Sunday, um, and I wish we were, you know, celebrating all the traditional things uh, with Holy Week. It's just another one of the rituals and parts of our regular routine of worship and life that has been set aside in the necessity uh, because of this very real crisis our country is facing, the whole world is facing, and certainly our community is facing. Um, and so I will acknowledge Palm Sunday here, and we do want to remember, and I'll keep re reminding us of the 
the holy season that we're in, but a, I've also realized that it's, it's hard for all of us to bend our thoughts uh, in other directions and our turning to God uh, in prayer and with questions and much uh, trepidation about this situation we're in. So I was led really to a scripture today that is not about Palm Sunday at all, but uh, kept coming to mind uh, in these times. And it's a scripture from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13, uh, that reflects some things that, I'm, that I've been grappling with, and perhaps you have too. And I'd like to share just a few thoughts with you today about that, and perhaps uh, help us all to some understanding. So this is Romans 13, which reads, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, he who resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of him who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is the servant of God to execute God's judgment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject not only to avoid God's judgment, but also for the sake of conscience. For this reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay all of them their dues. Taxes, to whom taxes are due. Revenue, to whom revenue is due. Respect, to whom respect is due. Honor, to whom honor is due. And this is the word of the Lord. Now, we all, no matter what time of history uh, we live in, ours or any other, are living under some set of governing authorities uh, of some sort, whether it's kings, emperors, in our case, uh, elected representatives and also agencies, um, institutions, uh, regulators of various levels. We are all under a whole lot of various authorities. Now, most of the time, we go about our lives and we're somewhat conscious of how these various rulers and authorities are um, dictating our conduct to a certain extent, speed limits, tolls, taxes, uh, prohibitions on this, prohibitions on that, but it's all in a regular kind of kind of benign way, and we're used to it. But right now, I think you'll agree, we're living in a time where in my life, and I think all of our lives, we can't recall a time when we were actively, actively um, controlled and confined and pretty much ordered about by a whole array of authorities, beginning with our own community and the regulations and steps we're taking to protect ourselves that are coming down from the state government and the regulators, all the way up to the state, federal, all the way up to the president, World Health Organization. There's not been a time, and if you're like me, um, we can't help wondering now and then, are they, are they doing it right? Can we trust them? We can't help wondering. Are they making the right decisions? Was all this really necessary? A lot of people are asking those questions and I confess I can't help now and then asking it myself because it's so unprecedented. This is what kept calling Paul's scripture to me. Now Paul is no um, Pollyanna naive, uh, you know, look on the bright side kind of guy. He was a strong, tough guy and he lived under the Roman Empire a dictatorship. He knew perfectly well how corrupt human beings could be. There was no one who was less, uh, less deluded about how 
good and, and righteous people could be than Paul. All right. All of his trust, all of his hope is in God alone. And in, with that in mind is how he speaks to us. There is no authority except what God allows to exist, is what he's saying. And us as believers must always, no matter how we are relating to those authorities that are placed, how we feel about them, no matter how they are placed, we must always remember that behind them is God's permission to them to exist and manage our affairs for our good. Now, I think we have to admit that for the most part, the authorities that exist attempt to function properly and do the best they can to do the things that are instituted to do. Keep order, preserve the peace, protect people, and enforce the laws. At the same time, we're perfectly aware that in our country at this time, um, it is a challenge for many people to trust this government. Uh, it's no secret that our, there's a great division politically in our country. Some people are taking advantage of that at this time uh, to uh, seize an advantage somehow over their political opponents. According to Paul's word for Christians, we are not permitted that kind of thinking and conduct. We are too. Give respect where it's due, pay honor where it's due, and obey the authorities, not for our good, but for the common good. Because what we really are obligated to do is to conduct ourselves in a way that is for the good of our brothers and sisters, our first among the community of Christ, and beyond that, our entire broad community in America. Paul goes on to say here, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For us, it is always the example of Jesus. Who, who had less reason to submit to any authority than Jesus Christ himself, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and yet, what did he do? For our sakes, humbled himself and subjected himself to the authorities that exist even unto death on cross for our sakes. He's our example. We may have our opinions. We may have our sense of our rights and our uh, what's due us. We may have our disagreements uh, with various policies and various public figures, etc. But as followers of Jesus Christ, it is up to us to submit during this time to those authorities which God has allowed to exist and has put in place to care for us and guide us through this time. It's not easy for me, I confess it, it's not easy for me, and I'm sure it's not for you either. But God's word comes to us not to uh, make us uh, reinforce what we already want to think, but to, but to show us the, to that, that higher level of being and thinking that Christ brings for us. Brothers and sisters, let's endure through this uh, together with Paul's words and Jesus' words in our hearts and minds at all time and help each other uh, to support each other and do what we need to do to obey what we're told to do. And thereby we pray, or fervently pray, help bring an end uh, to this terrible menace that is afflicting our world. Let us pray now. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We call out to you, Father, from the manor house, first and foremost, calling on you to protect our community and everyone in it. First and foremost, preserve us from the invasion of this virus into our community protect our staff who come and go, protect our residents. Lord, help us to continue to be diligent in all of the protocols we're observing and encourage others to do so by our own example of observing them carefully. Beyond this, Father, we do pray for our whole 
accompany all our fellow communities in Acts, that they too will be preserved. We pray for our leaders, um, directors, managers of our company, making all these decisions and bearing the burden for all this. Beyond them, we pray for the state and local governments and the agencies, all the way up to the federal agencies, up to the president himself and his task force that he has that is probably the primary authority over all these things. Oh God, we pray for you to bless their efforts and decisions with success. Heavenly Father, defeat this virus, we pray. Oh Lord, hear our prayer as we know our voices joined with all believers all over the world today. We've been given notice that the next couple of weeks are going to be very challenging for us all. And as the death toll rises, when that happens, should it happen as they predict, Father, protect us from discouragement. Help us look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Help us remember Paul's words, and as hard as it may be, to find the capacity within us to trust and persevere. And as people of faith, remind us, we know that you, Almighty God, can bring good even when things look hopeless. And that's what we pray that you will do here. Oh God, hear our prayer in the name of Jesus our Lord, who has taught us to pray. And join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to conclude with spirit song. If you know some of the words to this, please sing along. you and keep you. 
And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forever. Amen.